Hi everyone, welcome back to Combinatorics Math 301. And today we're going to be talking about section 7.1, which is generating functions. So the people who study combinatorics, this is their favorite topic, generating functions, uh, because it turns out to be really pretty how it works out. And it also has a lot of, of applications and usefulness. So uh, let's look at a problem in order to understand why generating functions are useful. And the basic idea behind generating functions is that we want to uh, think of problems instead of using numbers or sets, we want to think about translating a problem into polynomials. And so here's an example. Let's say in your pocket, you have seven pennies and two nickels and one dime, and you reach into your pocket and pull out some change and give it to your friend. So what could happen? Well, the smallest amount you could give is zero cents. The largest amount you could give is 27 cents if you give all the change. And there's several ways that you could end up giving 12 cents. For example, you could uh, give two pennies and a dime or you could give two pennies and two nickels, or you could give seven pennies and one nickel. So altogether, there are uh, then three ways, three ways to, to give 12 cents. Okay, so there are a lot of different outcomes here and sort of like a systematic way of figuring out everything that could happen without really trying to write them all down. So conceptually, let's think about this in terms of you can give a certain amount of pennies, and then we're gonna add that to however amount you give in nickels, and then we're gonna add that to however amount, the amount that you could give in dimes. So the number of ways, the amount that you can give in pennies is anything from zero to seven. The amount that you can give in nickels is zero, five, or 10, because so those, those are the different outcomes for uh, zero, one, or two nickels. And the amount you can give in dimes is either zero or 10, because that's either zero dimes or one dime. So let's look at the smallest outcome, zero cents. That comes if you add zero plus zero plus zero. The largest outcome, 27 cents, that comes if you give seven pennies and 10 cents in nickels and 10 cents in dimes. And the, how many ways can you give 12 cents? Well, you could, let's write this out. We could either give two pennies and a dime. So that's two pennies, zero nickels and a dime. Or we could give two pennies and 10 cents in nickels, or we could give seven cents in pennies and one nickel. Okay, so those are those three different green paths um, are the three different three different ways. Okay, so we're basically adding a number in this column with a number in the middle column, with a number in the end column. And the way you wanna think about this is that anytime you um, multiply polynomials, you add the exponents. So we're gonna make these numbers exponents and we're gonna multiply, um, multiply these things out. So here we're gonna think about all the exponents from zero up to seven. Here we're gonna think about all the exponents zero, five, and 10. And here we're gonna think of all the exponents zero and 10. Okay, so what we just did is we took the numbers in this first column and we made them the exponents on this polynomial. And we took the numbers from this column and made them the exponents on this polynomial. We took the number in this column and made the exponents on this column, polynomial. And so when, when we wanna multiply out a really 
large polynomial like this, we have to multiply, we have to take one term from each of the factors. So for example, if we wanted this zero sense corresponds to taking x to the zero multiplied by x to the zero and multiplied by x to the zero. And that's what gives us, um, that's what gives us the an outcome of x to the zero. Okay, let's say instead we took this x to the seventh, multiplied it by x to the tenth, and multiplied it by x to the tenth. That's going to be another term in the product, because when we take the product, we have to take every possible monomial from the first term, multiplied by any possible monomial from the second term, multiplied by any possible monomial from the third term. So the 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 leading term of this polynomial is going to be x to the 27th. And then uh, let's finally look at how many ways we could get an x to the 12th showing up somewhere in, somewhere in here. Well, if we want to get x to the 12th, one way of doing it is to take x to the seventh times x to the fifth times x to the zero. Another way of doing it is to take the x squared term here and multiplying it by oh, x to the zero times x to the tenth. I don't know what's happening with my pen here. Okay, x to the zero times x to the tenth. Or another way of doing it is taking the x squared times x to the tenth times x to the zero. Okay, and so altogether, there are three different ways of doing that. And those correspond with these, these green, green ways. Okay, so what we see here is that by translating the values of pennies, nickels, and dimes into exponents of polynomials, we can then multiply these three polynomials and figure out how many ways there are to, to give this change. But once we've made that translation, there's no reason to stop there. So let's go to Sage and think about making a polynomial ring. Uh, here we could take integer coefficients, but I just chose real coefficients. And the variable name is x. And I'm going to define this penny polynomial, which is 1 plus x all the way up to x to the seventh. Nickel polynomial is 1 plus x to the fifth plus x to the tenth and the dime polynomial as one plus x to polynomial. the 10th. And so now we're going to evaluate what that polynomial is. And when we multiply these three polynomials together, the uh, each term tells you one way that you could choose a number of pennies plus a value in nickels plus a value in dimes. And uh, then the outcome will be a monomial whose exponent is the number of cents that you've given your friend. And so for example, when we multiply out this polynomial, we found the three x to the 12th, and that corresponded to the three different ways that we could give 12 cents. But it also tells us every bit of information that we might wanna know. For instance, this term two x to the 20th tells us that there are two ways we could give our friend 20 cents, and that makes a lot of sense because we could either give one dime and two nickels or one dime, one nickel, and five pennies. So by multiplying out these three polynomials, we get a complete explanation about the values of 
cents we could give our friend. Those are the exponents and the coefficients are the numbers of ways that we could get that exponent. Sometimes it's helpful to pull out the coefficients of a polynomial. And so the way that you do that is to write g dot coefficients. And what you'll see here is a list. Each entry has two parts. The second part is the degree and the first part is its coefficient. So for example, that three X to the 12th turned into this term, three 12, which corresponds to the three X to the 12th. And then if I, for instance, wanted to figure out how many ways are there to get X to the 12th, that counts to 12 cents, I would see that there are, are three ways. Okay, so that was an example about how changing a problem into polynomials can uh, lead to a fast way to figure that out. So let's do a new problem. Let's say you're at a, a snack shop and you can get um, uh, uh, candy for $1. You can get uh, um, a veggie burger for three dollars and you can get a smoothie for five dollars okay and we want to think about so maybe the specific question we'll ask is uh, how many ways can you spend exactly ten dollars So in other words, what are the different outcomes? And so just to have some idea what's going on, we could think we could get two smoothies. We could get uh, one smoothie and um, one veggie burger and uh, two candy. Or we could get one smoothie and five candy. Or we could get three veggie burger and one candy. Or we could get two veggie burger and I don't want to lose this again. All right, we could get, um, where were we? Two veggie burger and four candy. Or we could get, oh, there's so many different ways. One veggie burger and seven candy. Or we could get 10 candy. Okay, so it looks like there are one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven ways. It looks like there's seven ways. But let's let's now try to do that using generating functions, which is going to be much easier. And we'll also figure out uh, how to manage eleven dollars or twelve dollars. Okay, so we're going to define a polynomial f candy. And so it's going to be one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed actually a faster way of doing this. I just add up the terms x to the i for i being 0 to 10, but let's just keep going. Okay, so these, these are, here are the exponents are the different amounts that I could spend on candy. So now how much could I spend on a veggie burger? I could spend zero or three or six or nine. I can keep going. Actually, I could have kept going with the candy too, but if I only want to spend $10, then I might as well stop with X to the nine. And then we have F smoothie being a one plus X the fifth plus X to the 10th. 
All right, and now I'm going to expand the product of these F candy times F veggie burger times F smoothie. All right, and so uh, the leading term doesn't uh, tell us so much here. What we really want is the coefficient of X to the 10th and that's hard to see because this polynomial has so many terms. So let's name this polynomial uh, h, and then let's take h dot coefficients and then I want to find the tenth one and there's the seven. So let's remember what this means. This means that when we expand this polynomial, there is a term that has x to the 10th in it. Its coefficient is seven. And that number seven represents all the ways that you could get x to the 10th as part of the product of these three polynomials. So for instance, two smoothies corresponds to multiplying the one times the one times the x to the 10th. One smoothie, one veggie burger, and two candy corresponds to multiplying the x squared times the x cubed times the x the fifth. And now, um, now what's nice is that we can figure out also, let's say you find an extra dollar in your pocket, how many ways could we spend $11? Well, there are also seven ways to spend $11. How many ways are there to spend $12? Again, seven ways. Oh, but now we have to be a little careful. Maybe I've made a mistake because my polynomial only goes up to x to the 10th and now I have more dollars. So maybe that's not quite right. Let's add an x to the 10th and an x to the 11th and x to the 12th. If I wanna go up to $12, I have to take into account that I could get just 12 pieces of candy also going to need to add an x to the 12th term here, corresponding to I could get four veggie burgers at $3 each. And I don't need another term here. All right, now let's, now let's see how many ways there are to spend $11. We see, oh, actually there are eight ways. And how many ways are there to spend $12? There are nine ways. All right, so here you can see that this way of changing a problem into a polynomial can lead to a very fast way to figuring out different options for what could happen um, in various situations. So we're gonna spend a lot of time in chapter seven talking about problems that you can solve using polynomials. Maybe I'll just end with some remarks. We already, uh, we already saw one place where using polynomials was useful, and that was with the binomial theorem in chapter four. In that case, we took the polynomial, uh, you can take the polynomial one plus x to the n, and that gives us the binomial coefficients as it the coefficients of that of that polynomial. So that turns out to be a generating function that's described in section 7.2. The other thing, uh, the other remark in section 7.2 is it's better for us not to think about generating functions as functions. You wanna instead think of them, think of them as a, a method, an algebraic method of solving problems. All right, great. So next time we'll talk about ways of manipulating generating functions.